Here we'll go through a worked example of factorizing cubics using polynomial division. So by cubic we mean these polynomial equations where the highest power is the 3, so x cubed. And what we're aiming to do is take an equation that looks like this and get it into linear factor form. So we have something like x minus something and then x maybe plus something and x minus something like this. So we know how to do this a few different ways with quadratics by either using the quadratic formula or looking at um, the factors of the last number and, and finding those. In this case, it's a little bit more difficult, but one of the ways that we can solve it is by using long division on the polynomial. So what we have to first do here, though, is know what we want to divide it by. Because in general, I can divide this equation by any linear factor. So I could divide it by x plus 1. But the problem is, if it's not one of the true factors, I'll have some kind of remainder left over. And so this will actually give me you know, an equation or give me some uh, quadratic, so minus something x plus 1 or whatever. But then I might have something left over and then so that stays as a linear factor or as a, a, rem a remainder left over at the end there. So what we need to do first is check what value we're actually going to divide it by. Um, and we do that by thinking of the quadratic as um, a formula. So remember with these kinds of equations we have a general shape that's maybe something like this. And so the values here on the x-axis, if we know those, then we know that the cubic is of some kind of form, x minus m, x minus n, x minus what's after n, maybe I'll just say o, and we can see that these are the values that I have along that cubic there. So if we're able to find one of those, um, then we'll be able to do the factorization. Now, different to quadratics, we'll always have an intercept. So our hope is just that that intercept is going to be an integer value so that, yeah, I can, I can find it. Because we know we could have, for instance, something like this. So we only get one intercept, but we will at least, at least get one. So what we do first is we treat this here as an equation. So I call it my f of x. And so I want to look for um, all values of x. So we want to just find um, x such that f of x equals 0. So I want to look at what values of x I substitute into this equation. So basically, if f of, we can say, x1 equals 0, then x minus x1 is a factor. This is basically what I'm going on. So what I do in this situation, I'm going to look at the last value, because I know that when I expand these values, or you know, if we have it in this kind of form, these will multiply together to give me that very last value. So I pretty much just look at factors of 30, or of negative 30. So I'm thinking of um, either plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4. Um, 0 is probably worth checking as well, although 0 won't be a factor as long as we've got something in that position. Because um, if we substitute in 0, we just get that negative 30 there. But so I'll go first to look at the plus or minus 1 values, and I get f of 1 for instance, gives me 1 cubed minus 19 minus 30. I don't need to evaluate it fully. I just need to say I know that that's not 0. So therefore, I move on to the next one. Um, f of negative 1 gives me negative 1 cubed minus 19 times negative 1 minus 30. This still won't give me 0. I'll have negative 1 in this first part, and then plus 19 and minus 30. So that's still not going to work. Um, I can look at f of 2, though. So f of 2, in this case, is going to be um, 2 cubed minus 19 times 2 minus 30, which gives me 8 minus 38 
minus 30, which is not zero again, but the eight and the 38 give me something a little bit promising. So at this next stage, when I go f of negative two, I'll have negative two cubed minus 19 times negative two minus 30 equals negative eight plus 38 minus 30, which does equal zero. So from this, I can now conclude, so from this equation here, I can conclude that x plus two, so because it was a minus in there, I need to make it x plus two, is a factor. So I can now, once I've found the factor, I can now go into my steps of long division. So our equation was x cubed, and then it was minus 19x, no x squared value, and then minus 30. And what I'm gonna do is set this up as a division. I'll check it here. Um, and I'm dividing in x plus two as my factor. So we set it up like you would um, an arithmetic division type of question with the division sign works well. Um, and now what we're gonna do is focus on, so that, you know, it's essentially an algorithm that we work through. Um, but what we do is we focus on the x um, and how it goes into this equation. So knowing that, you know, at the end, we're going to have this times some kind of quadratic, and it's going to be equal to this here. And you know, when, when we multiply by a quadratic, so if we have x plus 2, and we're multiplying by an x squared plus 3x plus 1, or something like that, we're going to have x times all of these terms and then two multiplied by those terms as well, and some of them will cancel out. So um, we kind of have to do it in two stages, counting, counting for that kind of process that's gonna happen. But what we really do is we focus on this x, we look at the first term here, so the x cubed, and we just say what's x cubed divided by x, and this is x squared. So we put x squared up the top. And then um, the next step, kind of like what does happen when you do um, normal long division, we multiply this through by that factor here and then subtract that to work out how much we have left over. So when I multiply x squared by x plus two, I get x cubed plus two x squared and so now what I want to do is I want to subtract this from the equation. So I'm going to subtract all of this from what I have here. And then I get essentially kind of like what I have left over, my remainder, um, when I divided that x into that equation there. So what does this give me? The x cubes will cancel. There's no x squared term in this equation here, so I'm just going to have minus 2x squared, and then my 19x and negative 30, that'll just carry down from the top. And so now I repeat the process, so I'm just going to go through this each time. So I'm going to be looking at my x again, I'm now going to be looking at this term here, I'm going to be asking myself what is negative 2x squared divided by x, and I just get negative 2x in this case. And so that's what I put up the top. I have negative 2x. And then to work out what's left over, I'm going to multiply this through again. And so now I have minus 2x squared and then negative 2x times 2 is minus 4x. And remember, I'm going to subtract this from that equation there. And once I do that, um, the two x's will cancel, which is what I should expect. So it should always cancel out with that first term. Um, but then I'm gonna have minus negative four x, so adding four x. So I get negative um, 15 x. And then minus 30 comes down as well. Um, my last step, well, I hope it'll be my last step because I should have no more steps after this. So minus 15x 
divide that by x and I'll get negative 15 as a constant. So I get minus 15 up here. And now multiplying this through, I'll get negative 15 x and then minus 15 times 2 equals minus 30. So as I had hoped for when I do this step, I should get 0 um, after I do the subtraction, which means that I know this goes properly. So I can now safely say that x cubed minus 19x minus 30 is equal to x plus 2 outside of x squared minus 2x minus 15. Now I wouldn't usually stop there because then I'd have to do the quadratic factorization. So when I factorize this quadratic, I can now use my other methods. So looking, for instance, at factors that multiply together to make 15 and then add together to make negative 2. So I've got negative 1 times 15 and then negative 3 times 5. Um, and then the other way around of these, I guess. So I can also have negative 5 times 3 and 15 times 1 or negative 1 times 15 um, and I don't know whether I have any other factors but looking through anyway I just need to make sure I can find one that adds together to make negative 2 and so that's this candidate here so I get from here that this is the same as x plus 2 and then x minus 5 and x plus 3 